Discernment is a quality that can be trained. You can train your spirit to pick signals with such precision that what God is saying in a moment, that's why it looks like as you are saying it is just happening, is a level of the development of discernment. Hallelujah. Are we together now? I'm saying this because I want to pray over you today. Huh? One of the graces that I'm praying will rest on you is the power to now begin to make quality choices. Quality choices. Remember my teaching at the miracle service that rise up and walk is greater than silver and gold. You can have silver and gold, but the greater blessing is the ability to rise up and walk. To choose that my children will not beg again. To choose that my spiritual life will not go up and down again. Ah, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. I set before you a life of pain, a life of misery, or a life of glory. I advise you, choose life. Your choice will affect your seed. I saw certain patterns growing up around my territory. I saw certain, certain patterns around people who had gone ahead of me and I made up my mind. I said, I will fight a good fight of faith and end certain things now. Let them end in my lifetime, in my presence. If it means me being the living sacrifice, let me be it. But there are certain things that must end. That's why I said, some of you are not yet angry enough. This sermon is supposed to provoke you. If you sit down and keep watching your life like that, what happened to your mother will happen to you. I'm telling you, I'm not a prophet of doom. Gentlemen, if you sit down, you know what spirits have done with preachers in your area. If you just sit down carelessly like that, the same thing will happen to you. You must take a different approach. I will not be the man of God that will finish preaching. There once upon a time I preached, and demons attack me not today not again not forever let me speak to preachers for a moment gentlemen ladies let me tell you the end time army must be an army of power choose to invest in carrying genuine anointing hear me choose to invest in carrying genuine power Talking grammar and stories, the world is tired of it. I assure you, mm, power to heal, power to raise men, raise them from a dung hill, power to declare over nations and shift the spiritual climate of nations. Don't stand before Pharaoh if you don't have power. You are confronting altars that are older than you. You are confronting altars that kill those who went ahead of you. Don't just stand and speak grammar. As for me, I've chosen. You ignore the ministry of power, your life will be such a defeat, I tell you. The missing link for many people is that you have not made the choice to press. You have not made the choice to pray. You have not made the choice to study. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm speaking to preachers, but let me tell you the truth. The powerlessness of the average man of God with all due respect in this nation, if we do not work on it, we will keep getting angry with ourselves fighting ourselves out of jealousy and envy that is not necessary one thing thou lackest most people lack power you don't have power and say i have power it is nonsense it speaks hallelujah speaks the power that is greater than the cause holding your family you have not chosen to come out of it, that's why. Oh, Apostle, I've been suffering from bedwetting. Who will help me now? I can tell you, my dear brother, my dear sister, you are not ready to come out of it, that is why. There is something about a human spirit when it gets angry. There is something about men when they are tired of their current situation. Yes, sir. The prodigal son got angry and said, Yes! 
How many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Do you believe what you are hearing? Choose life. I have chosen by myself that nothing is going to cut short my life before it's time. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. It's only when we get to heaven you will know how many shrines and how many habalists call my name day and night. Let this man die. You are joking. We are here for a very long time. I said before you life and death. You believe what I'm saying? Don't keep quiet. Keeping quiet is a choice to remain a failure. I've seen the spirit of death. I've seen the people that the devil wanted to just take like that. Speak, listen. I learned this from Papa Copeland. Right from when this man was young, he would speak over the organs in his body. And people were laughing at him. Oh, a preacher does not carry fire and this. Many of them have died and gone. This man in his 80s is still standing still speaking to the parts of his body every part of my body god gave me must hear me yes sir you must hear me if you are not obeying me you are obeying someone else's instruction i need to know who that person is koinonia will not go down no there is no going down no there is a covenant backed up by the jealousy of jehovah there is nothing satan can do about it I want you to get angry tonight because I want you to see the areas of darkness in your life. You are allowing the devil destroy people in your life. There are people every year somebody must die. Every year. Can I tell you? You are, you are just mechanically aware you are a priest. It has not entered you by revelation. The day the, re the revelation of your priesthood enters you, ladies and gentlemen, you will stand up with power and shake that altar and said the last person that died in this family will be the last person and end comes to it. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. They comfort me. They comfort me. Choose life. Choose life means choose health. Choose life means choose glory. Choose life means choose excellence. Choose life means choose power. The ability to produce results. Choose life means choose speed. Choose life means choose ever increasing glory. Choose life means choose greatness. Choose life means choose Jesus. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Hear me. Please hear me. Hear me. I sense in my spirit in the next, I wanted to run through a list about the various choices. I don't know if I will do that or not, but I just sense the spirit of prayer. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is the night that God has brought us to be angry at certain things that have been happening in our lives. You are a man of God here. Don't watch things go wrong in your ministry. You can make up your mind. You are a parent here. You are watching your child become maybe an alcoholic or something and you are saying there's nothing I cannot do. You can choose. It is the power God gave man. It is the power God gave man. It is the power God gave man. He respects that power himself. It is the power God gave man. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. Please listen to me. Just listen. Listen. When I took out time to study what a, a, an apostolic and a prophetic ministry, the implication of having an apostolic and a prophetic ministry, 
I remember reading several books on the apostolic ministry when I saw the spiritual demands the kind of weight and energy you must carry in the spirit to run a genuine apostolic and prophetic ministry I knew that I was playing games I was joking at that level of spirituality now then the relational demands the kind of influence you must command to be able to do ministry at that level effectively then the financial demand is the one that will even scare you hallelujah because the pioneering anointing is part of the equipping of the apostolic ministry you will do things that have never been done before not in the way they have been done before and doing new things carry a cost because you are setting the pace other people will model it and it will reduce the cost when others follow but pioneering is expensive hallelujah i went to god in prayer i said lord i want to do ministry with integrity this finance thing has tied people down i don't want this thing to be i don't want to lose sleep because of money issues and that's when i took out time god showed me the power of decisions that you can change your life if you are serious and i said lord i'm serious so and i went to search from scripture what is the secret of this thing when i found it i knew and today by the grace of god we're able to do things for this ministry and across nations by the grace of God and by the help of God, it has helped to protect integrity while we serve. Let me run through. I will not going to give you time to dictate. Please sit down. I will not give you time to write. I will just run through it, get the teaching because I want us to pray. Seven. One time when I taught you here, I think I gave you five or six. But I want to list for you seven destiny-defining decisions that you must make. Then we pray and wrap up. Seven destiny-defining decisions. Number one, very quickly. What is the first decision that every man must make? The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Please write it. This is the first and the greatest decision that every man must make. The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Matthew 22, 37. The decision to serve the Lord and to, to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. That you will love the Lord your God with all your heart. And I'm so honored to have our royal fathers come and declare this not just for themselves but for the land. Number two, the second decision is the decision to contend for a superior belief. The decision to contend for a superior belief system. This is very important. Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh, give it to us please. As he thinketh in his heart or interchange for mind, so is he. The decision to come out of old belief systems, limiting belief systems, satanic belief systems, mediocre belief systems. Number three. What is the third decision? Destiny defining decision that we must make. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. Please write it down. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. The decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. Hebrews 10, 7. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. A decision to live a life of purpose and meaning. This is to everyone, but particularly let me challenge the gentleman. It is wasteful to just exist. You give value to your life when you connect it to purpose. Beauty without purpose is useless intelligence without purpose is useless it is purpose that gives value to anything you have that means whatever god has given you in itself cannot be a blessing until you connect it to purpose are we learning number four 
the decision to contend for health and longevity the decision not just to be physically fit contend for health and longevity please write it down it is a project that you must make i will live strong and i will live long say that after me i will live strong uh-huh prophesy it again one more time i will live strong and i will live long yes sir you don't want to live long being weak there are people who are in the hospital with all due respect they will not die and they will not be strong they become a liability to both themselves and everybody around the value of longevity is that there is strength if there is no strength contending for longevity is a waste are we together now there are young people at 30 40 25 they are so i mean they are so wrinkled they almost bend over as if their grandfathers you ask them how old you are are you and they say 27 and you say i was going to mistake you for 55 come on now in the name of jesus i rebuke weakness from your body agility and strength and power without agility and strength you cannot do the work of the kingdom you will collapse contend for health but contend for longevity it takes good eating exercise training your body and your mind a correct state of mental health to live healthy but then it takes speaking the word of god and making prophetic declarations over your destiny to live long you need both contend for health and contend for long life are we together as for me and my house we will serve the lord i choose life in the name of jesus no arrow that flies by day no noisome pestilence that waste in in noon day or wherever will hurt me no i am immune by the power of the holy spirit no enchantment and no divination shall prevail over my body my spirit is comfortable living in this body my organs are functioning maximally by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ don't believe that the moment you get into a certain age certain sicknesses come with it now i respect doctors we have lots of doctors here but you can define your reality by choosing in the name of jesus at 60 my kidney my liver my health my thinking everything is intact by the power of the holy spirit is someone agreeing on that and you find yourself sick don't worry even while you are in the hospital taking treatment warn your tomorrow that just because i'm in the hospital does not mean i'm weak i'm only responsible it's not weakness it's responsibility so while you are going through the surgery while you are going through the treatment after everything don't feel ashamed speaking and let the devil tell you if you were that powerful why were you why did they perform the surgery on you the devil is a liar you speak it while you declare strength in the name of jesus vitality energy the bible says he keepeth his bones and none is missing it's the covenant of peace shalom nothing missing nothing broken as a preacher you declare i will never collapse on stage because i'm I'm completely walked out and no if you are if you are tired you rest not die are we together yeah. the decision to contend for health and longevity number five the decision to be financially or economically empowered it is a very major decision refer to my teaching last week i shall not want please get the teaching is online and listen to it very carefully it is our heritage in christ to not be in want no matter what way or manner it comes lack and want does not glorify god period settle that once and for all and get it out of the way lack and want does not glorify god you can glorify god in the midst of lack and want but lack and want is not god's design for you just like a person can survive 
with only one kidney am i right on that i hope but that is not god's ultimate but if that is the case the doctors can manage the person to have just one kidney but that is not god's best john 10 10 i am come the b part that ye may have life and that ye may have it more abundantly choose life the decision to be financially empowered i don't want to go ahead of myself and i don't want to make recaps of last week i've already spoken extensively on that but my dear people please listen to this man who loves you sincerely make a decision under god that i will not be poor anybody who tries to think you otherwise must be ready to defend you in the midst of your pain and the pain of your children there are many things we're able to do today some of the things the projects that we want to do for people some of these people will never know jesus until they have the privilege to go to a good school it is expensive to preach the gospel i can tell you it is expensive to preach jesus with integrity you know how much one borehole is calculate that times 50. what then is your definition of love if you cannot reach people what then is ministry if one borehole is say 1.5 and you do 50 you went to school calculate that that is minus whatever it is that comes that is the price it takes to sell jesus to a dying world that is the price it takes to let men see jesus how about widows that are fed how about orphans that would have died i remember i think two years ago or so our medical team went to do an outreach in one of the idp camps and when they got to that idp camp they found a, a, a young child that was almost left for death painfully the child eventually died i remember some weeks ago there was a woman who came with a child was a sickler joined the queue here i later found out that the child died it was so painful as she held that child you could see a product of pain malnourishment you know that she was a sincere mother but she was incapacitated it takes wickedness to sell poverty did you hear what i said it takes wickedness to sell poverty by god's grace and without sounding arrogant if it is for your own personal food you don't need much to eat but my goodness you need so much there's no need telling you the things that are done on a daily basis for jesus they require finances integrity requires finances in many regards Preaching sincerely and not manipulating people requires economic empowerment in many regards. Projects that bring the name of Jesus, not to brag, but sometimes it's good to say some of these things. The inmates in the Zaria prison, not too long ago, we bought them a big generator. Every quarter or so, we send bags of rice, stationaries, mattresses, the same was done, I think, early this year at the Kuje prison. These things cost millions and millions of naira. I don't want to tell you how much it cost to do the Manchester conference that had thousands of people coming to Jesus. If soul winning is not ministry, I don't know what else it is. No matter what you claim ministry is, if souls are not won, you are joking. Are we together? I can tell you that I've told you here what it takes to run this service that you are enjoying right now it is a miracle only God can strengthen men to be able to do that hallelujah there is all not not to insult the givings of God's people but let me tell you sincerely there is only so much tithes and offerings can do believe me believe me you know I'm not lying there are students now going back to school by the privilege of God's grace. I've had the honor of taking care of over 600 children and families. I've done this for many years. I only continue to add with joy. 
it takes a lot of resources to do that let me tell you housing schooling everything my apologies if we sound i just want to give you a superior orientation when you don't know what to do with money you don't need it god will not even give you for your safety but when you know what to do with it you can preach jesus with financial resources and be a blessing to people day and night my phone is full of the cries and the tears of people please do this i just announced to you some of the things by the privilege of god's grace the educational fund just a test run of it alone was 10 million naira and it only keeps growing that is the price it takes to help these children you know his royal highness we're having a meeting and he was telling me and i was so humbled some children who today have finished school who if not for that scholarship would never have had the opportunity to go to school what then is our definition of impact hallelujah the bags and bags we are going to be in zaria this week now the concert alone do you know how much the bill for the medical i mean imagine gathering people I think they are projecting maybe between 600 to 1,200 people. Free medical services. You go and try to get a drug for, for malaria and find out how much it is. And then there are bags and bags of... And we do it for both Christians and Muslims. I love Christians. I love Muslims. I love everybody in between. We are called to preach the message of love. But that is the price it takes. Imagine me coming to meet your child who says on scholarship and I say, sorry, something has happened. This family, from today we cannot pay your rent, know where you are going. You can imagine. There are many people who are converts who by the grace of God we are taking care of today. That is the price it takes to keep them standing for Jesus. Sometimes we say these things so that we do not, you know, I have a weakness in trying to brag and share testimonies. It's not something that I like doing. But occasionally, if we don't say these things, people just think we're talking about, I mean, what, I mean, how many things? This is all of me. How much money do you need to maintain a person like this? But for Jesus, reject poverty in the name of Jesus. Let it take away shame from your life and don't get beguiled by ignorant people. When prosperity has purpose, it is a powerful weapon in the hand of people. Hallelujah. Contend, make a decision under God. A hustler's approach, I have told you, is a defeated person's approach. All this, I want to make money, so I'll buy a jeep, so I'll enter. No, 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 no. That means you don't know God and you don't understand this program. How many clothes can you wear in a year? How many plates of food can you eat? No, the bigger cause is to be able to send resources for the sake of Jesus. I have seen souls saved. As I stood, I have stood by the grace of God on many crusade grounds. And every time I see souls come to Jesus. I had a very interesting experience in Ghana. While I was doing an altar call, there was this very little boy. Lovely little boy. This boy was kneeling down and he was really, you know, just sobbing and praying. I had to call him up and held him and prayed for him. I mean, I just, my heart just welled up with compassion. I was almost tempted to say, listen, let me put this boy on scholarship till he finishes school. I just said, well, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Maybe another time. What if that child tells you he's an orphan who is just looking for Jesus sincerely? And then you tell him, I bid you good speed. Go and read the warning James gave us. Show me your faith by your works. If we claim we love Jesus, we must show it. And resources help you to show that you love Jesus. I have vowed under God and as a covenant to you, my dear people, I will never, may I not live to see that day, that I will manipulate you financially simply because we are trying to put something in our pocket. No, there are some of us who fear God. Are we together? But you see, I have told you, I am only able to say things like this because number one, I love Jesus. But I will always say it. Number two is because there is food on my table. Am I right on that? Yeah. When there is food on my table, it can give me the confidence to remain and teach the truth that I ought to teach. If there is no food on your table, you will listen to me. 
but you will get up and go and do some things you should not do. There is a woman, probably she's following right now, wonderful woman from one of the northern states. And, you know, I'd never even seen her. There was a tragic situation in, in her life. I don't want to go into details. Compromises that happened be, because of finances for her and her family. But today, this woman, by the grace of God and the privilege of his mercy, has been rehabilitated out of that lifestyle, living a life of dignity. She has a business she's running now, loving the Lord with all her heart. If you don't know what to do with money, sit down and learn from those who know what to do with it. Every time you don't have understanding, sit down and learn from those who know. Are we together? Yes. I'm glad I made that decision. It is a decision I, I will continue to make for myself and for Koinonia so that we can do so much for his majesty for as long as i'm alive children will go to school for as long as i'm alive we'll do our best to see that widows and orphans continue to smile for as long as i'm alive i will help people financially i'm not ashamed to say it many preachers will be afraid because, ah be careful i'm not careful i will say it for as long as i am alive i will not do everything but i will do my best Hallelujah. I will do my best. The ones we can help, we will help. The ones we can cry with, we will cry with. The ones we can pray with, we will pray with. The one who we can stop from living a dirty life to be able to follow a life of meaning and know Jesus, we will do our best. Where we are limited, we will ask the Lord to show us mercy and raise others who have our kind of orientation. But to chicken out just because of the fear of prosperity message is nonsense. Not Joshua Selman. It's a covenant I have made. I know how money can demonstrate love. And we intend to use that weapon and show nations the love of Jesus. If you're in agreement, say amen. amen. Try becoming rich with understanding and see how better your life becomes. Are we together? You will serve the Lord. You will end many quarrels in your family that have no root. You will end many things. You will live in peace. Do you know that remaining healthy takes finances because it demands eating well that they tell you don't eat this don't eat that is it not somebody who has money that can obey that medical advice take supplements do this don't eat rice don't eat cabbage what else will you eat <laughs> a simple surgery that was going to be performed on one of our ladies, I think. That, that entire procedure, because that lady's life was at stake, it will require about 600,000 for that to happen. Probably that lady would have been dead by now. But thank God for the ministry of resources with understanding. That lady is alive and healthy. And her family can see her preach Jesus today. Let me give you the last one. Koinonia is quiet. I presume you are thinking. Number six, I promise seven, the decision to build strategic destiny relationships. I won't say much there. I've said so much about relationships. The decision to build strategic destiny relationships. You must have one friend in your life. If you don't have it, when we are praying, pray. Because something is wrong. If you have many friends, you are in trouble. It's not a sign that you are popular. It's a sign that you are careless. Did you hear that? Because your values should naturally edit many people out of your life. If you think you are a celebrity and you have everybody just likes me, it's a sign you are a city without walls. You must have people of values and people of standards. But you need friends. You need friends. Many of us don't have friends. Hallelujah. Many of us don't have friends. I think I was giving a charge at the wedding of our people yesterday and one of the things I told them is that marriage was not designed to solve all your emotional problems. That is a big mistake. There are many people punishing marriage today because they expect to get all their emotional comfort from marriage. That is not the design. There are dimensions of relational and emotional comfort that only comes from your relationship with Jesus. 
there are dimensions of emotional and relational comforts that only come when you have godly strategic relationships there are dimensions of emotional and relational comfort that comes when you have a spouse there are those that come when you have children they were all allocated their space hallelujah if there is a relational void in you check whether you have a relationship with jesus then next to that check if you have quality people in your life i'm praying for you may you never lack an ear to hear when you are in trouble especially if you are a man of god loneliness has killed many people because they do not have anybody they can confide in they are afraid of everybody around them because they do not even know who to trust again this is one of the problem of great people they have gone through enough wounds and betrayal they just believe that everybody is out to destroy them but it is not true there are still honest people there are still godly people there are still good people there are still friends that stick closer than brothers may you be one and then may you find one final decision number seven destiny defining decisions number seven the decision to be a blessing genesis 12 3 the decision to be a blessing you will think that this is the same as finding purpose they are similar but this is different you can fulfill your assignment and truly not be a blessing you can excel in career and yet not be a blessing do you know what it means to be a blessing when nations arise and thank god for your life when nations arise and say thank god you are alive when nations arise and say imagine what would have been if you were not there that is what it means to be a blessing